I'm here with Simon Waite and uh, we are going to talk about developer stuff I think. Simon you are the, oh god, the principal lead for developer action hero suits in Sydney, is that right? Uh, it's pretty close, yeah, pretty close, pretty close. Uh, actually the Azure Pro developer lead uh, for Sydney, so That's it. focus on developer communities here in Sydney. Yeah, cool. A little bit hard for me to remember that whole title, uh, but I get what you do. You, you do awesome stuff for developers. So what's been on your plate lately in terms of Azure development? I've uh, been looking a lot at uh, Azure App Service, um, looking at some of the new features that are coming down the pipe for that. Can't talk about them in too much detail at the moment. Um, Functions are doing a lot of work in the uh, public preview for Python support mm -hmm. for that, helping give the Functions team um, plenty of feedback on early stage engineering for that. Uh, and also playing around with the public preview of the um, API management consumption plan as well. Oh, so right. trying to build a, a, a serverless way of delivering um, APIs that are backed by um, functions sitting on uh, new Linux consumption plans. Wow, that's really cool. And you said Python, and then immediately I think, okay, which version of Python are you actually supporting? That, that, is, that is a good question. <laughs> um, so the Python support that we're building on top of functions um, is relying on CPython. Um, so that's being used to deliver performance by basically using compiled uh, behind the scenes uh, at runtime. Okay. Um, and I believe it's version 3.6 at the moment is the Python release that it's targeted at. Okay. Um, I don't know if the team is intending to provide uh, version 2 support. Um, at the moment, I think it's going to be just 3.6 and above, as obviously the new releases of Python yeah. come down the pipeline. Yeah, I wouldn't have thought that three, uh, new version two would be supported because it's you know I'm guessing most Python projects are moving on to three point something, but I could be wrong. Very cool. Um, <laughs> tell me about the API side of things because you said it's serverless and it sits on functions. So how does all that work? So um, I guess there's two components there. Maybe I was you know I didn't do myself any favors by being jumping between <laughs> a couple of things there, okay. but. Um, so the Azure API management um, service traditionally has been something where you go and you switch it on and uh, you have a series of tiers depending on what it is you want to do with this uh, service offering and it's always on and you pay a, a minimum fixed monthly cost yeah. for that service. Um, clearly uh, in the new Brave serverless world where everything is consumption based and on demand, um, there was a gap in the in the market um, from the Azure offering to have a, effectively a serverless API management gateway solution. Sure. Yep. Um, the team's gone away and basically built the capability into the platform so that um, you can spin up Azure API management, but you only pay for it when you're actually sending traffic through it. Um, and that's in pri uh, public preview at the moment. Okay, well that's a, certainly a step forward if, well, Maybe you do want to have you know the old time you know, subscription kind of thing, but consumption seems to be the way forward, right? Oh, look, absolutely. Yeah, I think um, you know it's one of those things where depending on what it is you're trying to achieve, you choose the right product offering. Mm. Um, the new consumption-based IPA management solution will have uh, an SLA attached to it from an availability standpoint. Clearly, with a lot of the serverless tech, you always end up with a bit of a cold start overhead. So, yeah. um, if you are seeing um, you know, slow start times on certain calls, then maybe that's that point at which you switch over to running on a non-consumption plan because mm -hmm. you get that guaranteed first first response time. Exactly. Uh, but if you're not worried about that first response time and um, cost management is a key concern, then that consumption mode works really well for you. That's very cool. Now, just to kind of jump a little bit in topics, but you work a lot with you know, enabling developers essentially. Yep. What are some of the really cool things that are coming out of that? What have you seen from the community that sort of go, you go, wow, I didn't think of that, that's cool. Um, so I was in a bunch of meetings yesterday with uh, Jeff Holland from the functions team yep. uh, here in Sydney. Um, and the durable functions um, framework that sits on top of uh, Azure Functions and allows you to do long running functions. Um, Jeff was saying in, in one of the meetings that I think that they've got like 25% of the commits and the features that are being built on top of the durable functions framework are being submitted through PRs on GitHub from the community. And the other 75%, obviously, it's the, the engineering team is, you know, controlling sure. controlling what's going into the product offering and obviously reviewing the PRs as they come through to make sure they meet 
meet yeah, the criteria yeah. for the team. But um, I think that's that's what I'm seeing a lot of is I'm seeing a lot of interest from people in the community about yeah. how they can contribute to things that they're passionate about. Um, you know, yesterday we had some folks, um, including yourself, go on a, a tour here in yeah, Sydney, yeah. Um, and you know, one of the gentlemen on that tour writes uh, open source GoLang. Um, machine learning style solutions um, and Onyx, which is the yes. the open source um, uh, desktop ML engine from Microsoft. That's right. Um, that's something that he's really interested in and passionate with, right? So I think just seeing that, that's really where I see a lot of interest from people is how can I contribute? Where can I find out more about this stuff? Mm -hmm. um, and people want interested in giving feedback. I think is is something that's new and interesting and exciting for me. Yeah, I definitely. For me, it's when the community get involved in a product. Usually, it turns out to be a much better product, right? Absolutely. You know, some people say, "Oh, we get free labor." No, not really. You just get passion injected, sort of, from the sideline. It's really awesome to see. Yeah. Uh, you look at um, .NET Core, for example. Um, you know, yeah. there's a, a gentleman in the MVP community now called Ben Adams, uh, who's done a lot of work around the performance of you know .NET Core and ASP. Uh, yeah, right. Sorry, ASP.NET. Uh, ASP.NET Core. Yes. Um, <laughs> yes, it. it's, a hard, it's a bit of a mouthful, <laughs> sorry. Um, and the performance that they're now driving through the pipelines um, in the upcoming, you know, .NET Core 3 release is yeah. just phenomenal. And a lot of that work's being driven through contributions from the community. So it's fantastic to see that. Mm -hmm.